Mute is so massively god-awful that it might be a contender for top 10 worst episodes of the series. I absolutely detest this story, and feel a mixture of utter disdain for its unfortunate implications, and a surplus of painful boredom for how dull it is. This is another controversial episode of The Twilight Zone, as it tackles some serious subjects. But for once, its intentions to teach us a valuable lesson are bogged down by a horrendous method of trying to help us understand a topic which even the writers don't fully understand as well. I actually side with the naysayers of this plot for once, because the harsh reality is this episode has not held up well. But what's so bad about this tale of suspense? We follow a little girl named Ilsa Nielsen, who recently lost her birth parents in a tragic house fire. She's soon adopted by the Wheeler family, the town sheriff Harry and his wife Cora, who take care of the now orphaned girl until they can decide what to do with her. Unfortunately, Ilsa is unable to communicate with them or anyone at all, as she is mute. Oh, that's why they call it that. However, there's No Kitten, a secret society who plans to retrieve Ilsa because she holds magical powers, only utilized by their kind. The reason why Ilsa doesn't speak is because she's a psychic. She can only talk through telepathy, as her parents died before teaching her to talk verbally. So the poor girl is stuck with only her thoughts. The secret society sends two agents to the town to adopt Ilsa, but the Wheelers are unsure as they grow attached to the girl, leading to the conflict where Ilsa must choose who will be her true family. Now, on paper, this seems like a decent emotional drama with a fun supernatural premise. Alas, the episode is anything but. Mute is another one of the hour-long episodes of The Twilight Zone, and as I said in previous videos, the show was forced to pad out small plots to fill the longer runtime. And boy howdy do you feel every second of it here, because this episode is so BORING. This is one of the most grueling episodes I've ever had to sit through, as the adventure is not the least bit interesting, well developed, or fun. This episode feels like it was going to be another half hour arc like the rest of the series, but was forced to stretch it out more when Serling was given the extra runtime. It probably would have worked as a short story as it was a very direct tale, but the longer runtime ruins it because the pacing is horrifically slow and there's not enough content to justify its length. There's so much exposition, long dialogue scenes, and Ilsa angsting that it gets repetitive fast. I'm not joking, the characters banter on for an eternity, to the point where it feels more like a play rather than a visually stunning work of art. I know the show has riveting dialogue, but this isn't one of them, as they basically explain all the magic, making the episode less fun because there's no mystique. Oh, but that's nothing compared to the grossly butchered moral and quote-unquote heartwarming ending the writers bomb at. Most of this arc is Ilsa's struggle between integrating with the normal mortal world and practicing her gifted shining powers, with her breaking down every few minutes when she processes some bleak realities, such as her parents being gone forever, not fitting in anywhere, and unsure who she should live with. And Jillian does pretty good as Ilsa, as she does feel like a true child lost in a scary world. If anything nice can be said about this bile, it's the decent child acting trying its hardest. My problem, though, lies entirely with the writing. Halfway through the plot, the Wheelers send Ilsa to a regular public school in hopes she can learn to speak. And it's here where we meet the worst character of the Twilight Zone, Ilsa's teacher, Miss Frank. 
Oh, I get it! Miss Frank is a stern teacher who rather forcefully gets involved with Ilsa's speaking issues. To put it frank, <laughs> the teacher reveals that she's a psychic too, and mastered how to talk both verbally and with her shining. The teacher offers Ilsa a chance at a normal life by getting her to talk through a special test she has to normalize those mediums. And by chance, I mean force, because she never actually works things out with Ilsa or her foster parents and has her entire class mind break her by thinking Ilsa's name out loud until the poor girl cracks her mind and has no choice but to speak with her mouth. Yeah, this chick forces this method, which blatantly hurts the child's mind onto her, so she can torture her into acting her ideal way, and the episode frames it as good old tough love. What. The. Fuck. Essentially, the teacher gives Ilsa the ability to act normal by abusing her until she behaves the way she wants her to, and it's seriously treated like a heroic moment. The bitch teacher abuses a child until she acts the way she wants her to, and we're meant to view her as the hero. You motherfucker! Holy crap is this disgusting. According to the showrunners, the intent behind this was to show parents the concept of exposure therapy. This is a method of treating somebody with certain issues with some exposure to the real world. It's meant to give troubled folks some insight into real life and teach them how to adapt to it so they aren't unprepared for it when eventually the time will come where they have to interact with it. However, the show butchers all noble intentions with their way of doing it, and makes this episode incredibly skeevy. We see that Ilsa feels tremendous pain when she tries to talk without her powers, so the teacher having her whole class think thoughts to overwhelm her abilities is hard to watch because it's torture to the girl. Yet we're supposed to cheer on the teacher because it's a tough love approach forcing her to act normal. Normal, which is sick. To make matters worse, the teacher does this 100% behind the foster parents' backs, taking this kid's problems into her own hands and forcing her to act the way she wants to. Considering the sad reality we're living in right now, a teacher secretly forcing their beliefs and ways onto a child under the guise of helping them has extremely failed to hold up. No. This is like having somebody beat a kid until they act the way the abuser wants them to be, and the fact that this episode treats Miss Frank as heroic for doing it is twisted. The episode tries to make her seem like this Obi-Wan figure, but she feels more like the man in black. Alright, alright, alright! Screw her. Oh, but then we get to the big emotional ending where Ilsa returns home to make her decision and finally talks normally, choosing the Wheeler family because she lost her psychic powers. Yep, the teacher not only forced her to talk normal, but she depowered the girl entirely and made the choice easier for her. Fuck you! The Shining agents see how happy she is with mortal humans being a regular child without the gift, so they allow her to stay, and later share a discussion to let the audience know that she's better off being normal, as the Wheelers can offer her a better world than they ever could. <laughs> There's also some BS that the Wheelers love Ilsa more than her biological parents ever did because she was just their test subject. But since we never see her with her original folks, it falls super flat. It's one of those details which felt like a last minute addition to justify the big decision. And here's the last million dollar question. Why couldn't Ilsa learn to speak both regularly and psychically? No joke, we see the secret Jedi Council all speak with both their minds and lips. 
so clearly they could use both ways of communicating. But for some reason, Ilsa was a special case where she couldn't have both? Plot hole! Yeah, the writing is so bad that Richard Matheson overlooked a huge detail like that, which could have resolved the entire character's struggle if they just put in a little thought. What the heck happened, Matheson? You were one of the best writers! What the hell happened to me? Oh, but we needed another long scene of the little girl crying with her foster mommy, glad to be a normal family. Ow, ow, ow. This episode sucks. I felt unclean after watching it. I know it was made back in a simpler time, but this is one of the rare failures of this legend. Ilsa is a severely underdeveloped kid character where her personal struggles aren't as deep as they could have been. Screw the bitch teacher for forcing her ways onto a kid. The dialogue scenes are stretched far too long. It's got a snail's pacing. The moral is butchered beyond belief. It gets emotionally manipulative. And worst of all, it is boring. If it wasn't bad enough the plot sucks, this episode is so slow that I actually had trouble staying awake. Psychic powers are usually cheap to film, as they require very minimalist effects, and even the Twilight Zone took shortcuts for them. It's true! I am cheap! The powers are mostly shown in these cartoony visions or with voiceovers between characters, which seems cool at first, but don't make for unique visuals. This episode is so dreary, and the lack of deep ideas makes it even lamer. But hey, that's what happens when you don't have enough fuel for the fire. I grant this fail bomb a decayed skull, and will warn you all to skip it completely, because it's got both a bad message and will kill you with dullness. It could have been a fantastic tale of found family, but it screws itself over by tackling serial subjects that were out of their depth, resulting in a sour apple spoiling the bunch. If anyone asks me about Mute, I can only stay silent. Chris, pay attention. I want you to... The Twilight Zone.